Hi, welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about putting it all together. So we're going to talk about tips and tricks and things that will help your research uh, be more efficient, but will also keep you out of trouble. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, first of all, I want to start with talking about the searches. So when you're doing a search, you've probably seen before, you can do a title search, an author search, a keyword search. Some of the differences um, are helpful to use those. So whether you're in Summon or WorldCat or using your local library's catalog, if you do an author search, for example, for Gandhi, you'll find stuff that's written by Gandhi, where if you do a subject search, you're going to get stuff that's about Gandhi. So depending on what research you're doing, you may want one or the other. So these are just things to keep in mind. And they work with all of the databases, too. So if you're in a specific database, for example, JSTOR, you can change between just doing a keyword search, which is searching for everything, versus doing an author search or a subject search. Um, those are, that'll save you a little bit of time. Additionally, you want to think about the source itself. So if you're finding something from a library database, you can most of the time trust that it's you know a reliable source. It may even be peer reviewed if you've selected to narrow it to peer review. But many times you're doing research and you're finding things on the internet, um, for example, on blogs, people's websites. Um, you know you may not know if this is a reliable source that you should use in your research. A uh, acronym that librarians use to determine this is called CRAP. C-R-A-A-P, and it stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. And you can use this acronym to determine the currency. For example, is it old, outdated information? The relevance, is it relevant to your topic? Should you even be using it at all? Authority, and this one I feel is really important. The authority is who is writing it or who is publishing it. Does it even list the author? For example, if you're looking at Wikipedia, it may not list the author at all. If you're looking at a governmental website, you know, maybe that has a little bit more authority than just a random person's blog or website. Um, so you can really take into account if it lists the name of the person, are they a journalist or are they a professional in that field? Um, accuracy, you know, if you know about the topic and you know, you know, how accurate it is, you can kind of weigh a little bit about what they're talking about and that ties into authority, and they don't have a degree in any of those areas, um, you should take that with a, a grain of salt. And then finally, the purpose. Are they trying to sell you something? Um, and we do have a whole uh, guide that we created, a LibGuide on fake news, which you may want to check out if you're looking at a lot of news sources and websites and blogs where we talk about how to determine if something um, is marketing to you and trying to sell you a, a, even a point of view, not necessarily a product. The next thing I want to talk about is citations. Uh, at the GTU, many faculty members require Turabian. You don't necessarily have to use Turabian if your professor wants another source, but you'll probably be using it in many of your sources, and I recommend getting the style guide. So eight is the style guide we've been using for the past few years, and nine is the one that came out, um, well, probably about April 2018 is when, this, when nine was published, so most of the papers that the students are writing now, they're still using eight. Um, but you may want to find out if you're a brand new student, you may want to just get get yourself Trabian 9. Um, and it, it is called A Manual for Writers of Research Papers, Theses, and Dissertations. And it's published by Kate Trabian, um, who is, uh, I should say, it's published in her name. She is deceased. But the Trabian Manual is excellent because it's going to answer all those questions that you need to know about citing. How do you cite, how do you cite something? For example, a book might be very straightforward, but how do you cite a YouTube video? You know, how are you citing different websites? How do you cite a letter? All of those things are going to be covered in, in the Trabian guide. Now, citations are very, very important. Um, I'm going to talk very, very briefly about plagiarism. Plagiarism is taken very seriously by all the schools. Um, Many of the schools have software that will actually run your papers through and detect plagiarism. But the bottom line is to cite your sources. Make sure you're citing it, um, you know, because sloppy note taking, even if you didn't intentionally copy someone's work, sloppy note taking is not an excuse. Um, I briefly will tell you the story about Peter O'Brien, who is um, 
He's a priest from, I believe, Australia, and we have a number of his books here. I just have two here, but we have a large number of his commentaries and his works. And it came out about maybe two years ago that he had heavily plagiarized from other sources. He is almost 90 years old now, um, but he admitted he had very sloppy note taking. He just wasn't paying attention. He copied things out of other books and they ended up in his commentary series, word for word, like three pages at a time copied um, in his notes and they were not his own original ideas. The publisher of these books actually pulled them out of print and destroyed all the copies they could get. Um, we have some and I use them for examples in class but it ruined his reputation. And the bottom line is don't do it because even if you are a recognized scholar in your field, plagiarism is still taken very seriously. So don't do it. If you need help about knowing when to cite, how much to cite, you can ask a librarian or you can look in the Trabian manuals because there is information in there about that as well. The next thing I wanna talk about is Zotero. Zotero so is a citation management software. It is free. It's available online. You can download it. And what it will do is help you organize your research. So as you're doing searching, you're finding things, downloading things, it keeps track of all of your stuff. Where did you get it from? So if you got it from, you know, our library online and you downloaded it, if you got it from your local library, you can use Zotero with all of that. And then as you write your paper, so if you're using Word to write your paper, or it works with some other software too, you can actually insert all of the citations right in there. So I did, uh, I'm gonna be doing more workshops this fall on Zotero, but I did record one of my workshops from last year. I'm gonna turn the screen sharing on so I can show you where it is. So on the library homepage, there's a little tab here for workshops. And I haven't put up the brand new fall workshops yet, but um, the past workshop, Zotero, you can see, it's about a 45 minute long YouTube video on how to download, install, configure Zotero so that it works with your computer. Um, it works for Windows or Mac, doesn't matter. Um, and you have to set it up. Turabian is not one of the default languages or the styles that it has in there, so you have to install that but the video covers all of that i will also be doing more workshops on zotero in the fall um, and you can always ask or if you're very techy feel free to just um, go to zotero.org download it yourself and you can figure it out um, but the video is a step-by-step -step on how to go through and do all of that all right so zotero is great uh, most of the students that use it tell me for an average paper, it saves them two to three hours per paper because you don't have to write down any of the citations. All of them, you just click in Zotero to add it in and then um, it will go right into your Zotero software. And then when you wanna cite it in your paper, it's all there and it brings in all the title information, um, all the author, if there's chapter titles, anything like that, it puts it all in your paper for you. And then at the end, it creates the bibliography for you in alphabetical order. So it can save a huge amount of time because you're not typing titles in basically. Some other research tips that I have, one is to start early. If, especially if you're a distance student and you have to order things that might have to come in the mail, like interlibrary loan, it's always good to start early. If you end up having to make a you know, research trip you know, in your town, across town to a local um, university library, or if you have to go to a theological library, it's nice to start early. Um, the Another tip I have is to use the bibliography from some of your sources. So I have, here's the um, Berkeley Journal of Religion and Theology. This is the GTU's journal. And if you look at any of, any of your journals, articles, um, and many of the books too, there's gonna be a bibliography in the end. A lot of times if you find an article that is excellent, you should look at the bibliography because you may want to read some of the articles that are here too, or books. So if you find these, you may have a, a citation that looks great and you want to put it in um, for the journals. You can go to the, the e-journal portal, which I talked about in an earlier video. For books, um, if you're at a distance, you could put the name of the book or the author in WorldCat and find out if it's already in your town 
or if you need to order it through interlibrary loan. So this is a great way to save time because you know, you may want some of these, especially if some of them are classic works, would be great to use. Another way to save, um, save yourself a little time is to use technology to make sure you're not forgetting anything. So you could use something like an online calendar and put all of your deadlines in there. You could use an app like Todoist, which is basically a to-do list, but it syncs across all your devices. So you can have it on your computer and your phone and your tablet, you know, whatever devices you have, your to-do list is categorized and it's on every device. Some students use things like Evernote. Um, other students I've seen just take pictures of things so they don't forget what they were, you know, what they were doing, what they found. They just, you know, take pictures with their phone. So those are all different ways. There's a ton of different software out there that can improve your efficiency when you're doing research. Um, so Tarot is my favorite time saver, um, but there's a lot more options. Um, my next tip is to make sure you're backing up your papers. So if you're writing a paper, you know, you could some, do something as simple as email it to yourself in case your computer dies. You could back it up on a flash drive or an external hard drive. There's a lot of ways of just making sure you don't lose your paper because it does happen now that, you know, while you're writing it, your computer may die. Um, Zotero, if you're using Zotero, it does back up all your sources. So as long as you're syncing Zotero, and this is in the, in the Zotero video, I talk about how to make sure it's syncing. But if it's all synced up, you don't have to worry about, you know, dropping your computer off your table and, and losing your research um, can all be backed up. My final tip is to ask a librarian. I often hear from students that said they wasted a lot of time, you know, kind of doing research in circles and not finding what they need. Uh, we're available. So even if you're not here, the librarians are available. We're available on chat. You can call us, you can send us an email. Um, if you're here, you can visit us. And then we also do one-on-one -on -one appointments over Zoom. So just let us know if you want to meet any way you want, um, whatever's good for you. So we are happy to help and um, we're here. So happy researching.